Greetings, mortals. I am the Fallen Shogun, and we are back with some Crylithium. And welcome back to the How To. So, right now, you'll have either made your own Crylithium or you've found Crylithium. So, either way, I highly recommend building up the Warforges. Yes, that. Also, that needs to go. Wow, that's a lot of stone. Okay. So we're building up the war forges. What are the war forges? The war forges are your golems. Now, each one is pretty powerful. I think I have four cryolithium. So we're going to build the stone golem. So the stone golem only gives you a couple. You get more wood golems and crystal golems are ranged. You can upgrade them and each upgrade will give you more of them. As you can see, they're not that big either. So that's pretty cool. So go to here. That'd be like one, two, three. That'd be there then. So I'm going to build one here and we're going to start powering it up. Hopefully. Missed. Do I have four quilithium? Oh, I have one, two, three. I have four quilithium. So let's get a second stone golem down too and power that up. So that will give us access to troops. Now they do require power to activate. You will be needing to still activate them by using mana, in essence. But yes, right now getting golems up is a good way to go because they are renewable constant troops and of course it means you don't lose infantry on the field of battle which would of course be your peasants. Losing peasants early on is a death sentence for a younger village because of course you need those people to be doing stuff. Let's upgrade you primarily and upgrade you secondarily. What's this? Thank you. But yes, you should still be harvesting resources, thank you. You should still be building up, expanding and obviously getting your farms up and running. You will be needing more resources for that. And you should still be continuously helping out your people as and when you can. The more you help out, the less they have to do themselves and the easier it is to build up. The very beginning of your base, your entire like first spring summer should be building everything you possibly can. Huh, it's rained. Let's upgrade this as well to get a chance. If you see any buildings you can help out on, like the smaller stuff, I highly recommend getting them up and running. Because every building you have but not being used is a waste of, you know, building space. This is getting worse. As you can see it's being held back a little bit. Hmm. Okay. Where is there it is? So I've got things on the three times speed to speed things up. Right now it doesn't really matter too much. There we go. Build. Build. More nomads, that's good. We need more peasants. The more the merrier. Of course, every building you have, it needs to have people in it. But I highly recommend if you have spare people, just put them onto building. Just get them building up stuff. There we go. So that's going to upgrade the rain catcher, which will have even more space. Susan and Janice, congratulations, builders, for now. Oh, and Malin. What was that? Elder, someone's an, an elder. So the elder people don't do anything. They just sort of hang around, use your resources, stuff like that. They have a purpose, you know, age. But they don't give any wisdom. They don't really care. They just sort of hang out and stare at you. For now, anyway, for now. But yeah, get your golems up and running. Slowly stop powering that. As you can see, it is now active. It's now slowly powering up. So this is the amount of mana it has in it, the middle bar. The lower bar is the charge. Once that hits 100, it will summon a golem. As you can see, I can get two stone golems. I can upgrade it, of course, to get more stone golems, but I have no crinithium. You can also build wood golems, which I think give you three. It used to be four, but obviously everyone went wood golems because they could just spam the enemy. Now golems will attack anything within your area of influence. So them combined with towers could be a very powerful force because the golems will obviously go out and hold the line and your towers will hit them. There we go, keep building. Bit of lag, looks like the enemy slowly starts to appear. We still need to work on this, so uh, you working on burning? Let's get a second one here, why not? 
That's two people trashing. One person burning, one person should hopefully be grabbing it. There we go. And that will give us mana, which of course will be flowing into buildings. And we need to start slowly gathering up. So we do need to work on getting the crystallary up and running. Of course, that is something we'll be targeting next. Because right now we don't have any quite lithium. Let's see if we can actually build it up here. Let's um, do this. Don't really need it here. And build a refined item, where is it? To there, there we go. Oh, I don't need to counter that. Okay, X. There we go, Q to another sign. There we are. So that's going to be prioritised highly as well. Mana is pouring into these. We have golems. See, a stone golem is already wandering around the base. There he is. You can repair stone golems. That is another tower which also requires essence. So you will need to build that if you want your golems to exist. That is the... Where are you? Where is it? Have they moved it? It was one of these towers. The banished tower banishes enemies. Very good for your main choke point. Oh, they have moved it. Where's it gone? Miscellaneous? Recombobulator Tower. There it is. They've moved it to here. The Recombobulator Tower is important because it heals friendly golems around it. Although I literally just had to hunt it down. But there you are. As you can see, the doggos are grabbing stuff. Go on, you dobby. Uh, still no socks. I do recommend if you have the chance to get a doggo house down. I'll put you to here. Because let's face it, it's a doggo! There we go. The doggo house will be very useful because your dogs can live in it. Obviously they will heal up in there and stuff like that. There we go. He's confused. Please don't run away, Johnny. That will get this ancillary levelled up, which means even more buildings and defences can carry on growing. We need to kind of stop the spread. As you can see, they're even building paths now. That means they are really moving about. We are going to have to assault this place. Now, the most important buildings to have really are the ballista. They can fire over the big curtain walls, like I have said, and they have an insanely powerfully long range and a lot of damage. They are very useful for hitting the enemy way out of your reach. But you do need high level resources to build them. But once you get the chance, definitely start getting Ballista Towers up and running. As you can see, it's not insanely too much. But it is a lot of high level resources for early on. But as you can see, this will clear this entire area. You can have this with the back of these towers defending it. Which I'm probably going to have over here, actually. There we go. Get rid of this area. And what I'll do is I'll build a tower over here to actually start firing. Just maybe keep this away. Although you can't fire over trees and stuff like that, it will just embed in the side. So be advised of the terrain. Like a ballista can't shoot here, there's stuff in the way. There we go. But we need to start melting down the world. Let's do that. Let's not motivate. Let's dissolve the land. And over here while we're at it. There we go. Now I don't really care about that, we'll grab the mana and carry on going. So yeah, golems and towers will be your aim of the day right now. As you can see, the skeletons have arrived, which means they don't take much damage off of the arrow towers. Which is a bit of a shame, but there you are. So your goal is to make the maze powerful and slowly advance it to where you're happy with it. As you can see, it's not taking too much damage. That's why you do need golems, but stone golems are slow moving. So a good mixture is a very good idea. Crystallary is up and running. That's good. You need that immensely for the future stuff, like starting into more powerful towers and so on. But once the crystallary is up and running, I recommend getting magically powerful towers active and start upgrading your magic storage. Like, 24 cut stones is a lot, but I do recommend really starting to push that. Because it will make a world of difference. You will start burning through mana insanely fast. Look at that, we're almost out already as it powers up the front line. Uh... There we 
go. More mana, more essence. So yeah, help out when you can to find the Radiance Pools, grab the power, and obviously start dissolving areas you have no influence over. Only dissolve the areas you have influence over if you're desperate, because let's face it, you don't really need to. As long as the power can make it to your base, you're fine. They're really pushing in over here, aren't they? Uh, this is going to be bad. Okay. As you can see, the mana has gone up. The essence is now powered up. It's continuously flowing those little green dots. But what can you do? Keep building, keep on going and growing. As you can see, things are still fine. Let's actually help out here. There we go. And he has four left. So we actually do need a few more rocks to make cut stone. That's fine. But yeah, it's all about helping out. There we are. So that has even more essence. That's a fully powered essence collector. You can at a glance say how advanced buildings are, of course, just by seeing what they look like. Remember that always. The skeletons are definitely pouring through. They are much faster, and like I say, they take a lot less damage because of arrows. But at this point in time, you want to start looking at more powerful defences regarding... Magic, bullet towers, if you really feel like it's a spray tower, stuff like that. A banished tower is highly, highly recommended. Because just like the banished spell, it banishes within the area around it. It's random. They could appear somewhere else in your village, like maybe 10 enemies attack here, and 10 enemies suddenly all over your village, but they're spread out. It's not one big group which will take out the tower. So a banished tower, very, very much needed. Let's get a large fire pit here. I should be doing this at night. Never build at night. This is stupid. Never, ever build... When the enemy is still active, your people just walk through them because your people are basically as dumb as dwarfs hunting socks. But you know, I live on the edge. As you can see. But yeah, skeletons and things will wreck their day. Look, he's already poisoned. Minerva's poisoned. Things are dying. But again, don't have one layer wall next to your towers, because when slimes split, they split over. This area is temporary and will be moved back. But yeah, do not build a single wall for your main line of defence, because slimes are split next to it. Not small ones, but the large ones do. There goes the first of it. Oh. But yeah, running out of arrows, that means we need another person making them. We've got no workers in Sillery. Okay, get two here again. Get rid of another builder, of course. Mm. But yeah, you have to make sure you have a huge stockpile of munitions and food. Food is very important. Munitions, probably as important when you start heading towards summer. So obviously you run out of ammo, half your towers just shut down. There we are, it's fine. But yeah, always make sure you have plenty of munitions stored somewhere. There we are. Plenty of food, because food is important, what with summer coming very soon. And obviously make sure you have plenty of golems active and operational. Okay, plenty of Crylithium. Let's upgrade you now. And you. Okay, there we go. As you can see, this looks much more powerful and bigger. And the next level looks even more amazing, to be honest. Let's actually do that as well while we're at it. I highly recommend always, always building up as much as you can. Because, let's face it, otherwise you've got a lot of really bad buildings and you only have so much space. Unless you're really building massively, you kind of want to keep on upgrading as your abilities go. But again, don't, don't over the top upgrade. 
You want to make sure that you can build one or two buildings at a time. If you upgrade everything at once, you just have, you know, your resources strapped everywhere. You're never really building everything. It's a bit awkward. Because even, like, you know, prioritising, your people are still stretched thin. I really need to build this farm. Okay, that's upgraded. That's even more f food stored. That's fine. Okay, that tower's going. There we are. Perfect. But yes, it's getting closer, so we're going to carry on building. Well, that's it. This is going to be upgraded to a better one. So again, I'm using large fire pits to have bigger space. I don't really recommend doing this if you're preparing for massive expansion. Otherwise, you can just dig a hole in the wall and quickly fill it up. Because obviously fire pits exp expand your influence, and that's not always a good thing. Especially when you guys are building outside the safety of your defences. Once your defence net is breached, there's no point even having one. I remember on this map, there should be another one over here, shouldn't there? Yeah, there it is. I knew there was one over here somewhere. Now you can temporarily use spells. I do recommend having the Banish spell on hand at any one time as a last resort. The Banish spell is immensely powerful, but that's entirely on you. But yeah, the Banish spell, definitely if you can, have it on your bar at all times at night. Or a Banished Tower. But yeah, I recommend slowly expanding your, your actual supportive area, which will be your maze. Having a fire pits if you're prepared to slowly expand. And obviously keep on expanding it as you go along with defences. I might delete this entire area, actually. As you can see, they're going to build it. We're going to have more stuff coming in. We need more people. People are still a bit low, but that's going to come with time, as long as we keep them alive. How are we doing stone-wise? Someone's bringing a cut stone because I can't put them down. Yeah, someone's definitely building this, because I can't build it. Get to delete this. And as you can see, it's still expanding and spreading. So we're going to get a... where is it? A ballista tower here to support. Obviously that's just bad placement on my part, but you just kind of need it active. This is going to get me more golems. There we are. Just obviously making more Crylithium. Like I say, it can be taken to these and stored. This one's being stored here to actually be put in later. Let's actually upgrade it too while we're at it. But as you see, we're going along nicely right now. There's no way they can get through here because the trees are in the way. Be careful you don't destroy a natural defence. So they can path through, they will. Yeah, keep on building, keep on expanding everything. The better it is, the longer it takes, the longer it takes, the more you can kill. The usual. Didn't get him. I think we're doing okay so far. Okay, let's upgrade you to a ice dart tower. Let's upgrade you to a fire dart tower. Let's have you priority one, and have you priority two. There we go. One thing you need to watch out for during the rain is lightning storms. Lightning storms will wreck your defences without you noticing. Yes, like this here. This was lightning. Lightning struck that and did damage. A couple of good lightning strikes will take out your defences before you even noticed. But, you know, oh, nomads. Where? One, two, okay, that's fine. 
More peasants. I can put them into the builders, I think. We need more builders right now. This is still melting down and giving me mana. Look at that's 50. We'll upgrade this. Oof. That's a lot. Okay. So I'm going to upgrade as much as I can while I'm at it. Obviously there's defences and stuff being built everywhere. There we go. And one thing, when you start clicking fast, please make sure you're not just randomly putting the resources back into the building. You do find you actually probably didn't click as much as you thought. And what you start doing is you take the resources out of the building and putting it back on the resource pile. It's a bit meh. Like that, as you can see. There we are. So I stole a lot of I stole a lot of stone. That's fine. But that means even more power is being stored away. It means we have even longer, which means our defenses can fire more often. Always make sure you have a massive amount of mana storage, mana storage and ammo storage start becoming a priority during the summer stage so you can actually build and prepare your defences. Before that of course you want your food storage to be going up. But yeah I do recommend getting a massive amount of ammo and mana storage for war. Because otherwise all your defences will shut down and you will be left vulnerable because there will be some nasty things coming in larger waves. Doing that, get that food storage going up. Where's he going? No, oh, he's stealing it. Looks like we're pushing it back slowly but surely. Okay, it's midday. I can still build another light. Let's slow down the actual speed so I don't end up wasting too much time. There we go. Only one extra builder. Ah, because you have an old person or a child. As you can see, as long as you keep on top of it, you should be doing okay. But even now, just demonstrating, it has taken over a massive chunk of the lower part of the map. You do want to keep it down. You can if you want to rush it with buildings. But that has the age-old problem of if you get it wrong, you have a lot of enemies spawning on you and you've used up all your building supply. But you can, if you want to, try to rush it down and lock it off with your influence. But I really would not recommend that. Because it will always spawn away from where you are. Like, it spawns here. A lot of time it has spawned up top, sometimes to my right. The best place for me for it to spawn is to the south on this map, because obviously where it is. But it does spawn the other two places too. As you can see, nothing major. I'm using my own power, which I said you shouldn't really do, but I am using it because I have more of it. I kind of just need this to be up and running. There we go. But yeah, you should be getting towards an okay stage. Of course, when the spectres and things and the elementals start arriving, you will be in trouble. But until then you'll be fine. Like the elementals do fire damage, they can set buildings on fire. It's a whole thing. But they should be coming in too great a number straight away. As long as you have defences engaging them, they will engage the defences and not say set fire to your farms. Look at that, pushing it back again. Now I can, I'd like to build some more around here and really seal it off. 
It'll take time, but there you go. Again, you've got too many things being built and so on. There's just people everywhere trying to do what they can, where they can. It's a bit... Yeah. Where is it? I need one cryolithium. Thank you. Oh, never mind. Oh, never mind. Someone is bringing it to it. Okay. As you can see, most of my builders are waiting for whatever resource they have available and building their buildings that need that resource. So some of them, like this one, they might be out of boards or something for all I know. So they're building everything else as they can. It is what it is. But anyway, I have been the Fallen Shogun, but even more Rise to Ruins. So hopefully you've enjoyed it, and I'll see you in the next one. The how-to series carries on. By now, you should have multiple golem positions available, and you should have them upgraded for they would support at least three or four golems. I thought that one was built more. I do recommend, when you can, getting some crystal golems up for some range support. But that is entirely up for you. I do recommend getting the stone ones because they can deal more damage and take more damage than the wood ones. But the wood ones, of course, are more numerous. Either way, I have been the Fallen Shogun. Ciao's for now's people. Bye-bye.